Welcome to worship night number 19, worship night at the cabin. Wow, I've got a question for you though, to start right off. In ancient times, way back, did man live to be a thousand years old? The Bible talks about uh, men living nearly a thousand years old. I mean, in Genesis, right in chapter 5, it says that Adam lived for 930 years. 930 years. Wow. And it says Adam's son, Seth, lived 917 years. And his great-grandson, his grandson, Enosh, 905. And his great-grandson, Kenan, 910. Great-great-grandson, Mahalalel, 895 years. And his great-great-great-grandson, Jared, lived 962 years. <laughs> His great-great-great-great-grandson Enoch was an exception. He only lived to be 365 years, but that's only because God took him to heaven before he actually died. But it goes on. His great-great-great-great-great-grandson Methuselah lived to be the oldest of any recorded man, 969 years. Wow, why a thousand years? if that's true. Did, was that God's cutoff? I mean, remember Adam, uh, Adam and Eve ate from the tree and, and ate the apple and, and, uh, and God had warned them, if you eat from this tree, you will surely die. And, and uh, maybe God said, well, okay, well, they're going to die, but when? Instead of eternity. Because remember, Adam was designed to live basically forever. Uh, his body, his physical body, was created that way. And, and now he ate from the forbidden fruit. So what's the cutoff? Maybe God thought, oh, well, I'll, I'll shorten his span from eternity to, I don't know, a thousand. I mean, compared to eternity, a thousand is pretty short. Maybe that was it. Maybe God decided to cut off, and it seems like all these people lived almost to that cut off. Uh, you know, what's amazing that Adam lived so long <laughs> that he was actually alive 243 of the 969 years of his great, 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 great grandson, Methuselah. And what's interesting, because he, his life overlapped Methuselah's, Methuselah could have learned about creation firsthand. Uh, wow, from Adam. And what's interesting is that Methuselah's life overlapped Noah. So it's possible that, you know, Noah uh, found out about creation from Methuselah and, and so on. So um, Noah was Methuselah's grandson, and their lives overlap by 600 years. Amazing. <laughs> so how could man actually live, physically live, a thousand years? Is that possible? Well, not in today's, you know, uh, world, because of our, our bodies are different. But, you know, maybe it's, you know, in pre-flood conditions, it could. I mean, the earth and the atmosphere and everything was different. The environment back then, it didn't even rain until the flood. Uh, the, everything was different. Was it that? Or, I mean, was it because of their diet? Maybe the food was different and, and helped sustain them. And, you know, whatever the case, uh, uh, long life uh, existed, and maybe they lived that long simply because God sustained them physiologically, the way organs and cells function and exist. You know, maybe, the, maybe they didn't age uh, quickly. I don't know, but why don't we live that long now? Why don't we live a thousand years now? Well, maybe because, you know, God deliberately decided to shorten the lifespan of man. I mean, chapter 6 in Genesis even talks about you know, the flood and, and that man's wickedness caused the flood, caused God to make this flood and wipe out nearly every life on earth. And, and um, it also says that 
God decided to limit man's lifespan to 120 years in that, in that same chapter, Genesis chapter 6. So yeah, that sounds right. 120 years, that's about max anybody can live. I don't know anybody that, you know, come close to that. My mother lived almost 107, one month short of 107. That was pretty, pretty long. But 120 years, that's kind, of, that's kind of it in today's world. Um, you know, that long lifespan of nearly 1,000 years is absolutely remarkable. It's almost unbelievable to some people. Um, some actually contend that their 1,000 years back then, that time, 1,000 years, is different than 1,000 years today. And that, you know, 1,000 years back then is not the same. In other words, the... Maybe back then they would contend that a thousand years is kind of equivalent to a hundred years, a hundred of our years. You know, what if Methuselah's 969 years is really 96.9? Well, that sounds pretty, pretty reasonable, you know, living to 96.9. Uh, sounds pretty reasonable argument until you, you find out and realize this truth. The Bible says that Mahalalel, who's Adam's great-great-grandson. He had a son at age 65, but then he lived to be 895 years old. So he had a son at 65, lived to 895. So if uh, their 1,000 years is equivalent to our 100, then that means that he lived 89.5, but had a son instead of at 65 at 6.5? Impossible. So, wait a minute. That their thousand, thousand years, it must be like our thousand years. You can't have a son at age 6.5. Yeah, he had a son at 65, lived to be 895 years old. So, likewise, if Methuselah, who lived... Um, to be 969 years old, um, you know, really was only 96.9. That means that Abraham uh, lived only 17.5 years old instead of 175 years old. It don't make sense. So yes, you see, a thousand of their their years is the same as a thousand of our years. They really lived almost a thousand years back then, through through God's sustaining and design. Amazing, amazing. Could, could God do that? Could our God do that? Could God determine how long someone's lifespan should be? To think God is not able to say God is not God. If you believe God is creator God, then you must believe that he's able to do all things that he's all-powerful and he set everything in motion and he has all authority and supremacy. Wow. One more thing. Since their ancient years were basically the same as uh, our years, then their ancient days must be the same as our days, 24-hour day. What does that say about the days of creation? God actually create everything in six 24-hour days and then rust on the seventh, like the Bible says? An evolutionist would say, this is crazy. On the other hand, the creationist would say, it's not only possible, it's probable. To say that God couldn't do it would be to shortchange him, to say he's not able, his ability, he's not, he doesn't have the ability to do it. I want you to consider this section of scripture. And this is when God was given Moses the Ten Commandments. So I'm in Exodus chapter 20, verses 8 to 11. And this is God talking. Remember the Sabbath day by keeping it holy. Six days you shall labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is a Sabbath to the Lord your God. On it you shall not do any work, neither you and your son or daughter, your maidservant, nor your animals, nor the alien within your gates. 
So God is talking to Moses in, in his terms of days, so he understands a day is a day, and you're supposed to work you know, six days but rest on the seventh day. And then he goes on in verse 11 and, and continues that same train of thought, same perspective of days, and God says, for in six days the Lord made the heavens and the earth. So, you know, when he's, God's talking about days, why would he change the, the definition of a day? He, you know, he's telling, he's, telling, he's telling Moses, work six days, rest on the seventh, work six days, and just like I created the heavens in six days. So, um, yeah. He's referring to a 24-hour day. So, you know, God uh, can and did, I think, make everything in six days. Why, you know, why would we doubt that? Is God not powerful enough to do that? So, yeah, God's powerful enough to make everything in six days, the universe, the world, everything, and and. Man once lived to be a thousand years old. <laughs> wow. The thousand year old man. Things are just amazing. You know, I love the way the Bible, you know, shows time and time again that God is in control and God is powerful enough and he can do the impossible. He can do all things. And he, he has the ability and he's in control and his word and his promises are true. And God is a real-time, interactive God. He's, he's real-time. He's not a God of the... Of, he is the same God of the past, but he's not just re, in the past. God is now. He's real-time, and he interacts with us. There's a great verse. Uh, actually, there's three verses I want to read in Psalm 104. And I read this once, and the phrase at, at the end just got me thinking of the picture of God in always with us and in control. And, and I wrote a song based on this section. Let me read Psalm 104, 1 through 3. Praise the Lord, my soul. Lord, my God, you are very great. You are clothed with splendor and majesty. The Lord wraps himself in light as with a garment. He stretches out the heavens like a tent and lays the beams of his upper chambers on their waters. He makes the clouds his chariot and rides on the wings of the wind. Wow. When I, when I first read that line many, many years ago, that line, he makes the clouds his chariot and he rides on the wings of the wind. I wrote a song based on that called On the Wings of the Wind. And uh, I'll play it for you. of the wind on 
of the wind. I love that phrase. Well, I hope you are all well and safe in these troubled times we're in. Just remember God is in control. He's sovereign. He's able to do all things. He's able to do the impossible, what we might think is impossible. So uh, just put your trust in him. Let's close out in prayer. Father, I just praise you right now and lift you to the highest place and thank you for being near, being close, being available, that we can call on you and you hear us. So we praise you and honor you and we do this in Jesus' name. Amen. So until next time, Arrivederci.